Ever wonder what the difference is between streams like this? Where's somebody else at? While other streams end up looking something like this. The stream guys today we're gonna be that's stuff now. It's the difference could be just a few settings inside of OBS. So today we're gonna be diving into the common mistakes that tank your stream's quality and steps that you can take to fix them. Before we jump into it, let's go ahead and talk about making smart choices. And speaking of smart choices, we've partnered with Mint Mobile to share how they're revolutionizing the wireless world, offering premium service without that premium price tag. For example, have you wondered why in the world is my wireless bill so f high? Well, Mint Mobile is here to show us that there's a better way. For as low as $15 a month, you can get access to the nation's largest 5G network, unlimited talk and text, and all the perks of premium wireless, without that unnecessary cost. The switch to Mint Mobile is incredibly easy too. With digital eSIM technology, many of you can actually make the switch directly from your couch in as little as 15 minutes. And for those of you needing a physical SIM card, well, Mint Mobile can send you one for free too. So don't stick with the old way of doing things that's overpriced and complicated for no reason. Visit trymintmobile.com forward slash how to tech to get premium wireless for $15 a month. My wife and I made the switch over a year ago and we absolutely love it. And I mean, who doesn't like saving money? All right, let's get back to the video, but make sure you check out Mint Mobile linked in the description down below. When it comes to streaming, audio issues are the top stream killers. Too often, streamers ignore OBS's powerful audio settings, leading to streams that viewers click away from pretty fast. But don't worry, getting crystal clear audio is easier than you think, so let's dive into OBS and tweak those settings. First thing I wanna cover is clipping, and clipping is whenever you get over zero dB, it distorts the audio. You want to avoid that at all costs and you can check on each of your audio input devices in the audio mixer and see if they're hitting zero. As you can see with my microphone, it's falling between anywhere between negative 20 and about negative 10. And this is where you want your microphone to land in. This is a great spot for your audio, for your voice to be, and we wanna keep it there. If you're also capturing something like some kind of voice chat, whether that's Discord or a meeting, you'll want that to be in about the same area as well. We wanna stay out of the red. If you have certain parts in your stream of where you get really loud and you do get in the red, but you don't hit zero, then you're probably good. And if you are in red pretty frequently, you might wanna pull this gain down by adjusting this slider here. Now, the other thing I wanna cover really quickly is if any of you play video games, there are some things you need to do. You need to play your game and you need to set it at the volume that you plan on playing it at. And then you need to come here and adjust the audio as well. And we want to make sure our audio is anywhere between negative 45 dB and at the most probably negative 30. It's gonna allow your game audio to be loud enough where people can still hear it on the live stream. The audio is not competing with your microphone. So people are still going to be able to hear you. Now that we've covered those things and getting your mix right, there are a few other tweaks that you can do to your audio via filters. So let's go ahead and click on the three dots next to one of these audio devices and then click filters. And we're gonna just be covering three really quickly. The first thing is every single audio device, no matter what, whenever I live stream, is I set the limiter. The limiter essentially means that the audio is not allowed to go above that volume. I've got mine currently set to negative six. This is what it does by default. And if you need to add a filter, um, I know I glossed over that really quick. You can click this plus down here and then select a filter from this list. By default, it goes to negative six. I recommend just leaving it there. That is a great setting. And by default, I, I love where that's at. But for example, let's say I didn't want my audio to go over negative 25. I could adjust this slider to somewhere around like negative 25. And now you can see my audio is fighting and I, it, it just can't get over negative 25. This is going to keep your audio from clipping. So keeping it around somewhere like negative six or just anywhere before zero is going to be helpful. I once again, recommend setting that on all of your audio input devices for your live stream. Next is noise gate. This one is something that I don't recommend near as much as I used to, but I'm going to explain how noise gate works really quickly for those of you that might need it. If you've got like say an AC in the background or a fan and it just has just like a low noise that's constantly, even whenever you're not talking, that's hovering like anywhere between like 60 to like 35, 40 dB. Like it's just loud enough to 
be there and have your microphone open the entire time while you're live streaming. And it's annoying. You can adjust this with these thresholds. The open threshold basically says once we get to this volume, we're going to open up the microphone. And if it drops below this setting, negative 35, it's just going to cut it off entirely. So if you had an annoying noise at like negative 20 dB, well, it's not going to open unless you talk over or I'm sorry, not negative 20, like say negative 45 dB, right? Um, it's going to be enough to where it's still annoying. It is a background noise, but it will not open the microphone until you talk or a noise is made that's loud enough to jump over negative 29. And then once it gets back down to negative 35, it's going to cut that device off again. I hope I explained that pretty decently, but noise gates can be important. But more than that now, I recommend noise suppression. Noise suppression does have some pros and cons. The pros is it just makes streaming easier for people that are in a noisier environment because that's not always something you can control. Now, the problem with noise suppression is noise suppression can distort your audio just a tad, depending on what method you're using. Um, the methods here, you know, this one's a little bit better quality, but it does use more of your CPU. So that's going to depend on your hardware for your computer. But definitely, if you have annoying sounds that make your audio sound worse, try maybe using a limiter, try using noise gate and try using noise suppression, figure out what combination works best for you to help get rid of the annoying noise. So people can focus on your voice and with a good mix, your stream's going to sound a thousand times better. Now, have you ever experienced a stream that's more of a slideshow than an actual video? Chances are the encoder settings are probably to blame. Finding the right encoder settings can transform your stream's performance. Let's check out how to optimize these settings for a smoother streaming experience. For the encoder settings, we're going to go to settings, output, and then we should see the video encoder here underneath the streaming tab. And if you have simple enabled, you would see it right here. The only thing I'm really going to cover is that if this is set to software or X264, I recommend changing it to anything else if you have other options here. This is going to depend on your computer and whether or not you have certain hardware that does support hardware encoding for video. But if it does show up and you have other options here, I would suggest trying them out. Since I have a NVIDIA graphics card, I have the ability to use NVENC, and it's just going to take that workload off of my processor. Now, if you want to read more about that and how it works, I'll link this web page down below. And it also has some other information as well telling you what the other hardware encoders are that OBS supports. So NVIDIA graphics card is going to be NVENC, AMD is going to be AMF. And if you have an Intel CPU, you might have the ability to use something called QSV. And if you're using Apple Silicon, you might have VT. So once again, if you have the ability to use something other than X264 software encoder, utilize that first. And that's probably going to help out your stream quite a bit. A good friend of bad encoder settings is typically wrong bitrate. Bitrate's a balancing act. Too high and the viewer's slow internet may suffer and they might experience frequent buffering. And too low and your stream looks like a game, unfortunately, from like the 70s. So let's try to fix that. Let's nail down the perfect bitrate to keep your stream looking sharp and running smoothly. Figuring out your bitrate can be very confusing, so I'm going to try to break this down and keep it as simple as possible. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and run a speed test and figure out what your upload speed is. So my upload is bouncing between anywhere from 8 to 10 megabits per second, and that's something I need to keep in mind. We also need to make sure that this is something consistent, because if you're dropping frames, maybe you need to reduce your bitrate. But once we figure out what our upload speed is, this kind of gives us an idea of the range of resolutions and bit rate that we can use for our live stream. The next thing I would highly suggest doing is going to whatever platform you are on and plan on streaming at and figure out their bit rate guidelines of what they recommend for whatever resolution you plan on streaming at. So for example, with my 10 megabits per second, I should be able to stream at 1080 60 because that's recommending 6,000 kilobits per second. Another thing I want to mention, 1,000 kilobits is one megabit per second. So if you have 6,000 kilobits per second, that means you need about six megabits per second to stream at this speed. Keep in mind that you need a little overhead if you're doing anything else or anybody else is using the internet. So if you're playing a game in a Discord or Skype call, just have somebody else on the internet doing something else. That's some headroom you need to keep in mind there. 
once you've kind of dialed in what bit rate you can use and what resolution and all those other settings you're going to use, we're going to take the appropriate bit rate and we're going to go ahead and tie it in here. Now, one thing that you can do whenever you go to add in your bit rate, so we can see that we have the ability to add it in here under the streaming tab. And if you're in the simple tab, it'll look a little something like this right here at the top is if you do have something like 100 megabits on your upload, still, I highly recommend you use what the streaming platform recommends for you. Keep this stuff in mind. You might have to test it a few times. And if you have multiple people on the internet, you might actually need to back that down just a little bit on your encoder settings for your bit rate. But dial this in, give it a few tests, and you should be good to go. Did you know that OBS has a built-in stats tool that's made to help you monitor the quality of your live stream? And ignoring this is like ignoring a check engine light. It probably won't fix itself and it usually ends badly. Monitoring stream health in real time can actually save you from a streaming disaster. The last thing you want is frame drops and stream crashes while you're trying to connect with those new viewers you have. So let's take a look at how OBS helps keep you in the know and how you can avoid these problems. Your stream health by default, a lot of the information that you might need is actually gonna be down here in the bottom right hand corner. But what I recommend more than anything is actually going to view and then stats. And stats right here is actually gonna give you a lot more information that might be relevant while you're streaming, while you're recording, or whatever else you're doing. And we can see that currently right now stream is inactive and we've dropped zero frames, but this is actually a really good tool for looking at and seeing how many frames you do drop while streaming. This could be a problem with your encoder, this could be a problem with your internet, and other things that we can actually figure out. We can see whether or not it's memory usage, so if we've skipped frames due to encoding lag or frames missed due to a rendering lag, these two can be very important, um, possibly in recording or live streaming. And then we could also have the same problem because of our internet and bitrate. But being able to look at this and monitor our stream health can actually show signs whether or not our stream might actually crap out on us while we're in the middle of live streaming. So this is something to, once again, keep an eye on. And our goal is to try to keep that percentage on dropped frames as low as possible. Using your webcam's default settings is like showing up to a job interview in your pajamas. All right, you're not putting your best foot forward. Seriously, a few of these tweaks can make a difference, a world of difference to your video quality. So let's go ahead and dial in those webcam settings to get you looking awesome. So this looks pretty awful and we're gonna fix it. And the first thing we wanna do is find whatever device that is. This is like my testing setup, so there's a bunch of stuff in here, but I know it's this webcam. So we're gonna right click on this and click properties. Inside of most of these windows, there's the ability to click something like configure video or configure crossbar. We're gonna click on configure video and we can see that there are slider and adjustment settings in here to adjust things like brightness, contrast, and a bunch of other different settings in here. And what I would recommend is adjusting those and making your camera look better. Now, that is a very subjective statement. Some people like their camera to look very differently than others. And I'm actually gonna hit default right now and show you that default settings normally look like trash. But depending on your webcam, a lot of them actually come with utilities nowadays. So mine comes with a utility. So let me open my camera utility and we can see that there is a camera utility right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to adjust our settings and get our camera looking just a little bit better so it doesn't look like trash. It looks like I'm on the on the face of the sun. It really does. So let's fix that. The picture's just too bright. So we're going to pull down this thing called ISO. And this is going to um, kind of turn the sun down. And I do have two bright lights in here. And I could pull those down if I wanted to. Um, I just don't want to do that yet. Um, we can also adjust something like shutter speed on this camera. Not every camera is going to have an option like that, but this is a good option for being able to dial in the lighting as well. And something right around there, I think looks quite a bit better. And then we also have noise reduction processing that we can turn on. I think it makes it look kind of smooth, almost like a, a Snapchat filter. And I'm not a fan of it on this, um, but you could adjust that if you like that. It's your own prerogative there. And then uh, let's see, we can adjust the contrast a little more or a little less. Honestly, I think this camera looks better whenever there's not much contrast inside of it. And then, um, yeah, I like it with um, no contrast, please. Uh, 
And yeah, we're pretty much good. If you want it a little bit brighter, you could do that. Um, or you could just bring back up the ISO a little bit. Little word of advice. Most of the time, whenever you bring up the brightness or ISO, um, you, you actually want that stuff set as low as possible. So using something like good lighting is going to help get better quality out of your webcam. So that's something I would recommend doing. Um, but yeah, just go ahead, jump in here, mess with the settings. I, I apologize. Not everybody's camera's the same. I can't help all of you dial in your cameras to just be absolutely perfect. This is by no means perfect. It's not as good as my DSLR camera, but dialing in the settings is going to make your stream a lot better because once again, this is what I look like now. This is what I would have looked like with just default settings. Don't do this. Do, adjust your settings, you know, dial it in, figure it out. The last thing we're going to be talking about is losing all your OBS settings. And this is a nightmare. No streamer wants to live yet. So many people forget to back them up. Me included backing up your settings is your safety net. So let me show you how to quickly and easily do this. So you're prepared. This is a lot more simple than I even originally thought it was. I backed up this stuff before. Um, I haven't done it in a long time, mainly because I've just gotten so used to being able to build stuff out in OBS so quickly, but getting to your settings and your scenes and backing them up is as simple as going to file and then um, show settings or show profile folder. Um, one of these doesn't go exactly where you need to go. So um, here and then it is basic and here you go. These are your profiles that you have set up. So I have a gaming HTT 4K HTT stream and a vertical. And then my scenes are down here as well. All you got to do to back these up is go in here inside the basic folder, copy these, put them on another drive, and then you got them. It's, it's that easy. Armed with these fixes, you're now ready to elevate your OBS streams from zero to hero. So remember, every single great stream starts with a solid foundation, and now you have the knowledge to build it for yourself. If you found any of these tips helpful, then get subscribed for future OBS tips and possibly check out this video here where we cover 33 easy tips to grow on Twitch. Happy streaming.